and then uh, take home. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm ending uh, this presentation in a minute. Uh, remember the parable we open. I think um, from there we know that we really need to be each other's brother's keeper. We all need to support one. Uh, we all need to support one another so we can maintain a good mental well-being. Say no to drugs and drug abuse. And do not perpetuate online bullying or any other forms of abuse in school, at home, or in the workplace. Don't be part of the problem. Don't be a perpetrator. Be, be a support system for somebody um, so, so that we can, we can all, you know, enjoy sunshine and flowers and, and rainbow colors and, 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 not, and, and not think of, of dying because online someone has, has been abused. By, by people who should be supporting them. And then uh, finally, my final thoughts, um, I'm going to leave you with a scripture from Philippians chapter four, verse eight, which says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So that, that's the final thought. And that's what Paul was writing to the Philippians. And this is a very, very important uh, scripture and something that we need to do. Think about good things, honest things, true things, pure things, just things, lovely of good report, things with virtue and things that are worthy of praise. If we think on this, I think it, 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 it cuts a lot of our issues as far as uh, mental health uh, is, is concerned. And that's the end of my presentation. So I'll leave this time to, am I leaving it to Emelda or who so that we can facilitate uh, the asking questions? Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Pesci. It's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. They say less is more, and you have done just that. You have given us a profound teaching on, you know, the relationship between mental health and our physical health and everything. Um, I'm not sure if there are any people have questions. Um, I would like to ask those questions, may please type in the chat box any questions. Like something you'd actually want to reiterate from what you've said, you can repeat. And I'm pretty sure you'd appreciate that because it would show that we're actually paying attention to what he was telling us, to what he was teaching us. So if there's anyone who'd like to just say a few words, type a few sentences about what the, about what they learned, it would be amazing. And personally, Dr. Percy, I've really learned a lot and the, the thing that I'm pretty much walking away with is that, you know, I need to build relationships with people because they will be my support. Good relationships are good for my mental health. And that will sort of like help me navigate life and keep me away from drugs or anything that may actually eventually affect my mental health. So that is my takeaway point and I really appreciate it. And Miss mm -hmm. O is asking if alcoholism is hereditary. Um, so yes, there is some level of, um, of genetics involved in, in alcoholism. So I think it has come from that we have, we have noted that like if you have a family history of alcohol abuse, you, you, you tend to be at risk of alcohol abuse as well. There are other factors involved, of course, that have much more strength, like the environment that you're growing up in, uh, which, which, which we discussed, but there is some com component to it of, of, of genetics. All right. Thank you, doctor. And Chipo is saying, I'm sorry, I just joined late. And she's asking, how do you recommend, how do you recommend someone who attempted suicide and it happened two days ago? 
how can we assist the person? I, I think uh, it goes without saying that that individual needs to visit their, their nearest health facility and, and get professional help. Um, a suicide attempt is, is usually is, is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sign of, of a, a lot of other underlying issues that could be going on. And I think having to deal with it just at home may not be enough. They need to see a professional and they need to get uh, proper advice. They might even need to go on treatment, uh, etc., etc. But let them visit their nearest your, your, uh, your professional. Thank you, doctor. Um, Belinda says she learned that we must not be hard on ourselves. We are supposed to appreciate what we have, what we have, and we also need to manage stress. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Mr. Killian. He's saying, what is your advice to someone who believes that dying is a solution to all answers? Yeah, again, that person needs counseling. Uh, that person needs to see uh, a professional counselor. Um, they need to have a, 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 a conversation on, on, on depression because from, from the statement itself, we, we can tell that there's some level of underlying issues or, or depression going on. And depression is a, is a mental disorder that actually has treatment and, and um, you, you, you don't need to die. You, you just need to be, to be seen by someone and, and get professional help, be on medication and you're going to be well. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you, are, you, I agree with you because half the time, people are committing suicide to try to escape what is bothering them, but they are attacking mm -hmm. themselves instead of attacking the problem. So we need to help them to see that it's the problem we need to attack rather than themselves. Yeah. Right. And Tinashe is asking, how do you become your brother's keeper without pushing them away? on the topic of alcoholism and mental health. Say the person is in denial and you want to help. Yeah, it, it, is, it is quite difficult. I understand this question. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. But, but I think to start with, we, we need to, to, to be very friendly and, and have a much more loving approach than, than a judgmental, you know, you don't want to come from a, from a position of, 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 of holiness. I don't know how to put it across. Yeah, but from a position of, I, I know it, you're wrong, you know, like leave that, leave that right now. You know, you want to come from a position of love and, and, and understanding. Um, that's, how, that's how you can tackle it, not, not condemning anybody or, or not, or not, you know, using terrible words, but in love, you know, try to make people see the light in love, as opposed to in a, in 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 in, in cursing or, or in you know in in, in demanding or you know I, I don't know how to really really put it across, but I, I hope I hope it makes sense. But it is quite quite a difficult topic again to say how how can you really do alcohol abuse of, uh, from a friend without pushing them away. And you don't want to push them away. You want to bring them as, as close as possible and, and discuss the issue from, from a friendly uh, or friendly basis. And you, uh, above all, you don't want to discuss the issue. Why is the holding, you know, something already? And then we start to discuss the issue to say, you see what you're holding, you know? You want to discuss the issue on a day they are sober, you know, on, a, on a day they're, they're, they're at peace and they're happy, they're not.